welcome and thank you for joining us in our weekly devotions in honor of a mother of perpetual health. Redemptorists, their friends and devotees of Our Lady are happy you can join us every week in prayer, song and reflection for this half hour. Let us for a moment open our minds and hearts in contemplation of this ancient picture of Mary, the mother of Jesus, whom we call our mother of perpetual health. See on this mother's face a quiet and sad expression. Having long ago given her yes to God to be the mother of God's son, she is now experiencing the cost of her yes, much as we sometimes have to count the cost in our daily lives of being followers of Jesus' teachings. She holds the child firmly in her arms, wrapped in her veil of sacred blue. She gazes out at us, a message of graceful acceptance of both joy and difficulty that comes with a life that we have chosen and which has chosen us. Her path is our path. Step by step, we struggle to become steadfast in the ways of love, hope, and faith. Let us look at the angels, Michael and Gabriel, presenting to Mary the symbols of her son's passion, death, and resurrection. They are there in this painting to remind us that no tragedy or loss in our life is ever without a redeeming grace. Sometimes this message will come to us quickly. Sometimes we may have to wait in patience until all is right and we are all one with Jesus in heaven. See the child's sandal hanging loose yet still attached. Our life here on earth is fragile and precarious. But like Jesus here, we trust that we are always held firmly in the grasp of the one who loves us, even before our life began. Let us look at the star in Mary's veil, recalling the star that led the Magi, also known as the three wise men, to find Jesus, and another star that led them to safety away from Bethlehem. Mary, our mother, is our star, leading us always to Jesus and keeping us safely in his presence as we go on our way through life. And let us recall in our own time the powerful words about Mary from Vatican II. By her motherly love, she cares for her sons, sisters, and brothers who will journey on earth, surrounded by dangers and difficulties and they are led into their blessed home.
as we begin to go towards St. Patrick's Church. I invite you to wave your flags once again, ladies and gentlemen. As we celebrate our gratitude and devotion to our Mother of Perpetual Health. As we heard just before we began our parade slash procession, today marks the 150th year that blessed Pius X entrusted the icon of love, the icon of our mother of perpetual help, to Father Nicholas Morin, the Superior General of the Redemptorist Congregation. And he gave to the Redemptorist this proviso, to make this icon known throughout the world. And so the Redemptorists have done that for the last 150 years. It has processed from uh, St. Alfonso Church in Via Marilana in Rome to here on McCall Street at St. Patrick's and all around the world. Many of you come from different parts of the world where you've already known about this devotion. And so today, this centennial anniversary of the gift of our Mother of Perpetual Help to the Redemptorist is also a gift given to the whole church. Do you know, sometimes we put Mary on a spiritual pedestal and overlook how hard and difficult her earthly life was. Her holy parents, Joachim and Anna gave her earthly and spiritual formation in her time. The woman who began the New Testament was grounded in the Jewish traditions of the Old Testament. It has been often said of Mary that she is the last disciple of the Old Testament because she is the first disciple of the New Covenant. Mary lived her Jewish faith as a humble Jewish girl. The early chapters reveal how Mary accepted Gabriel's invitation to become God's mother, just as we see Gabriel in the icon of our mother. With Jesus growing in her womb, Mary greets Elizabeth. St. Luke tells us that Elizabeth is filled with the Holy Spirit and cries out in a loud voice, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And Mary responds to Elizabeth with the prayer known as the Magnificat, a prayer that the church, both in the East and the West, pray every day. Her words fill us with awe and humility of one filled with God's grace. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked upon his servant in her lowliness. All generations shall call me blessed. God who is mighty has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. That beautiful prayer goes on for a few more verses. It is the longest Mary speaks in the Gospels. It is a prayer of praise, worship, and thanksgiving, showing a deep awareness of who God is and how blessed Mary is. And here Mary shows us all what true prayer is, a humble and honest acknowledgement of God's power and grace at work in her. She has listened deeply to what God is asking and he, she has responded with all her gifts and talents. She holds nothing back. By her humble and obedient yes, yes to Gabriel's invitation to become God's mother, Mary enables the word to become flesh in her womb. Her yes clears space for Jesus to come bodily into our world. And so Mary receives that great title 
that we mention in our Eastern Church of Theotokos, truly the God-bearer. She sums up the entire Old Testament and at the same time becomes the first disciple of the New Testament people of God. St. Augustine says this about the mother of God. His mother carried him in her womb. May we carry him in our hearts. The virgin became pregnant with the incarnation of Christ. May our hearts become pregnant with faith in Christ. She brought forth the Savior. May our souls bring forth salvation and praise. May our lives be not sterile, but fertile for doing God's work. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Christ is risen. Mother of perpetual help, your very name inspires confidence. We come before your holy picture in praise and thanksgiving to God, seeking your intercession with Jesus, your Son, for all the needs of our lives today. We celebrate your holy motherhood as we proclaim Jesus Christ, our Lord and Redeemer. You answered when called to be mother of our Lord, obtain for us the grace to be alive to our baptismal call, and especially to embrace the gospel of life and to respect all life on earth. You wondered as your son grew in wisdom, knowledge, and grace. Intercede for us so that we may welcome the word of God in our lives and be bearers of the good news to one and all. You delighted as your Son healed the sick. Intercede for our sick, that they may receive good health, and that they in their turn may be healers to others. You enjoyed peace as your Son comforted the afflicted. Intercede for all who suffer, so that they may know that we carry their burdens with them, and in this way we keep the law of Christ. You rejoiced as your Son forgave sins, obtain for us the forgiveness of our sins, and lead us to unbind others and set them free. You suffered at the wounds your Son endured for our salvation. Help us to bind up the brokenhearted and to give hope to the downtrodden. You exalted in your Son's resurrection, obtain for us the grace to persevere in his way all the days of our life and be granted a place in heaven. You are the first of all the disciples and saints. We trust in your motherly love and care. Obtain for us all the graces we need to fulfill God's plan each day in our lives. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession, was left unaided, inspired with this confidence, we fly unto you, O Virgin of virgins, our Mother. To you we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in your mercy hear and answer us. Amen. People of faith do not have a monopoly on caring for each other. In fact, the work of loving God's people doesn't just happen in a Catholic hospital, a big cathedral, or a faith-based school. But Catholic institutions should be models of excellence and care and willing partners with anyone and everyone who will serve those most in need. 
When I was 11, I was served by a rural public hospital. I had a collapsed lung and I had to do a hospital stay on my own. I remember when my mom left the hospital that night to go home to my dad who was harvesting and men in the field and my three younger siblings. She asked if I'd be okay and I said, yeah, I, th I think so. <laughs> I wanted to be okay. Not an hour later, a nurse came in who knew that I was really not okay. And she didn't know what to do and I didn't know what to do. But she rubbed my feet so I could fall asleep. I was served by a rural public hospital and a public school. Over my years at high school, I had many teachers who loved me and nurtured my gifts. They read and praised some pretty fledgling, if not awful, attempts at poetry. They corrected my pitch and let me sing anyway. They let me play on the basketball team even when I scored on my own net. They saw my belovedness and helped me to grow my gifts, helped me to see my belovedness even in myself. These amazing people working for secular institutions nurtured the values that I learned and love in my faith community. They taught me about love and universal care and human dignity. When I went to university, I studied arts, English, geography, theater, and then I went on to theology. Coming from a rural Saskatchewan town, the question was always the same from parents, teachers, friends. What are you gonna do with two arts degrees? But I was never afraid. There had always been places to serve before. For those who, like me, practice spirituality in a church, we have chosen to follow Jesus. Every day, we are called to serve those in need, anywhere we find them, in any circumstances. We have to do this in secular jobs, in random places that are unexpected, whenever someone calls out for help. It happens in kitchens and backyards, parks and workplaces. It happens when people of faith are at work in the world and when God's people of all faiths are serving the world. So far, my career after a degree in theology has been at the service of Catholic institutions. First the diocese, then now Catholic healthcare. Catholic institutions was a whole new world for me. As I've said to school teachers and healthcare professionals, to youth ministers and priests in Catholic settings, you and I get paid to be disciples. <laughs> it's a great privilege. And we get to do so alongside anyone who shares our values of care and love, compassion and service, faithfulness and human dignity. A faith-based building and history of service is our invitation to take a radical love for each and every person in every corner of the world with anyone who wants to join us. May the legacy of missionary priests and religious women who serve so faithfully for so many generations continue as a result of the dedication and faith of new generations of lay people, people who want to make a difference in the lives of others, working alongside any and all of God's people, regardless of the belief systems that gave birth to shared values. And may God bless the work of our human hands, always and everywhere, outstretched with love for all God's people. Amen.
Lord Jesus Christ, at a word from Mary, your mother, you changed water into wine at Cana in Galilee. Hear our prayers, grant our petitions, in honor of our Mother of Perpetual Help. Grant wisdom and courage to all our religious and civil leaders, our Holy Father the Pope, our bishops, and all who lead us, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our Mother. Grant peace, unity, and good harvests in all the world, especially in places of conflict, war, famine, and need, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our Mother. Grant married couples the grace of their sacrament, wives and husbands a binding love for each other, parents the grace to welcome and cherish their children, single parent families unity and strength and peace and blessings on all our homes, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant to our single adults fulfillment in their call, to our young people success in their endeavors, and courage to witness to their faith to our elderly, vitality, security, and contentment in their days, and to the separated and divorced, the grace of your spirit, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant workers confidence in their work, dignity in their accomplishments, joy in their contributions, a just and living wage, and to the unemployed, grant gainful work, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, Grant to your church many laborers for the harvest, good priests, deacons, brothers, sisters, and laity, who will dedicate their lives to your faithful people, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant eternal life to all the deceased and a place in the communion of the saints, where every tear shall be wiped away and where we shall meet you, our God, face to face, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, Grant to each of us the grace to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with you each day of our lives. For whatever we do to the least of our sisters or brothers, we do to you, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Let us pray. Mother, mother of perpetual help, we who call on your most powerful name, thank you for the graces we have received through your intercession and for hearing our prayers today. For God, who is mighty, has done great things through you, and God's mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. Amen. Thank you for joining us in prayer and song in our devotions today. Thank you for your faithful prayers for all our people and their needs, especially for those of you who have sent in your prayer requests. Our volunteers read and answer every one of your letters. We know you pray for us and we pray for you. And thank you for your generous donations and financial support. Your donations, along with all of our supporters across Canada, have kept the devotions on TV for more than 20 years. Every donation, large and small, is precious to us and allows us to continue this ministry to you. The TV devotions gather over 40,000 people every week in homes, hospitals, seniors residences, apartments, and Catholic schools as together we pray to God through Mary for the great spiritual and temporal needs of our people. Please help us if you can Make your check payable to Perpetual Help TV Devotions or go online to our website www.redemptrists.ca or www.redemptrists.tv and make use of the PayPal link we have established there for your convenience. Official charitable income tax receipts are mailed out monthly. Write to us with your prayer requests. Each week, we Redemptrists offer a special Mass of Thanksgiving to God in honor of our Mother of Perpetual Help for all of your intentions. If you would like a free prayer card like the one used on the TV devotions, write to us at the address on your screen. 
So now follow along with your prayer card, a final blessing. May the Lord Jesus Christ, Son of Mary, of perpetual help, be with you to defend you, within you to sustain you, before you to lead you, behind you to protect you, and above you to bless you all the days of your life. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Haiti is a country that dedicated to Our Lady of Perpetual Help as the patroness of the country. And knowing that the Redemptor is also dedicated to Our Lady of Perpetual Help, that was the first thing that attracted me. And the second thing, living in community is very beautiful. When it comes to work, to reach to other people, um, you need a brother to see what you can do and what you cannot do, and then together we accomplish the task together.